my lovely, lovely imps. Today on this wonderful return stream, I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about something um, the vast majority of which transpired while I was away, but that is very, very important. So some of this is, is going to, uh, you know, be a little bit of stuff that you've already heard about, but I feel like it's important to talk about in a broader context. And of course, I am referring to the pro-Palestinian protest movement that has swept all across college campuses and beyond all over the United States. Um, this is a truly historic moment when it comes to student protests in America. And I genuinely believe that these student protests are going to go down in the history books. Um, the amount of, of activity and energy and courage and bravery and tactics and organization that we've seen on display from students all over the United States um, is genuinely breathtaking. And I believe this is for, for those of you out there who are listening right now who fancy yourself as serious lefties, you got to pay attention to what these students are up to, okay? Because they are quite literally on the front lines of, of, of developing struggle against oppression in the United States. Um, we have seen, I, I want to do, I feel like doing, like going point by point wouldn't do this justice. Let me talk about some of the stuff that we have seen. We have seen the mass formation of encampments of students, um, in major campuses all over the United States. It is actually incredible just how many campuses formed physical encampments full of tents where students were spending day and night striking from their classes, making a, making a loud, a loud presence, uh, uh, making themselves heard, taking a stand, and also um, making explicit and organized demands uh, uh, for divestment from a genocidal regime. It's incredibly, incredibly uh, uh, amazing that uh, students have been able to be the ones pulling this off. Um, it goes to show that, uh, that you do not have to have uh, all of the experience in the world in order to come together and build smart strategies that can be effective. Now, a lot has happened. A number of, uh, a number of these protests agreed to disband after coming to an agreement with um, with uh, the camp with, with campus authorities. Um, many of those did not have their demands met. Others are still going to this day. Others were dismantled by force. Um, and I wanted to talk about the amount of force that we have seen rained down upon these students and also what these students have done uh, to push back against it. During this entire uh, uh, ex explosion of protests, we have seen students training together in order to be able to peacefully but firmly resist even police violence. We have seen students organizing themselves, self-organization, into doing drills, drills which have been uh, uh, proliferated um, through student organizations and protest movements, um, some of which were uh, uh, most famously highlighted during the Hong Kong student protests. Some of you will remember some of the documents that were uh, being circulated on uh, uh, between students that some of them made them you know into social media where you could see here's the, the pamphlets that are being handed out that students are saying here's how we're going to work together to resist arrests here's how we're going to work together to make sure that we don't get pushed out of our place physically actually incredible um genuinely incredible to witness this and i must reiterate over and over again that these have been abundantly peaceful protests um, the, the absolute worst that we have seen in any of these is, uh, is, is some vandalism, which is 
uh, extremely common on college campuses to begin with. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but it's kind of like uh, vandalism and college campuses are like, they're like that. You know, kids get drunk and do stupid shit. And that's about the worst that we've seen in a mass organized protest movement, a protest against one of the most heinous crimes imaginable by one of the most vicious governments in the world. And the worst that we've seen has been vandalism. That's incredible. That takes an incredible amount of restraint. It takes an incredible amount of motivation. These students have put their hearts, souls, and bodies on the line. And it's really, really impressive. Holikmaster says, I was at the UCSD one. Seeing a ton of counter-protesters and riot police was crazy. The audacity of the admin telling us that the campus police was for our protection. Yes, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about in going into this subject. The response to these overwhelmingly, I mean incredibly peaceful protests, um, has been a deluge of propaganda, misinformation, and violence. We have seen campus police, the NYPD, uh, 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 state, even, even, even state guards being called in in order to mete out violence and arrests onto these students. Students were arrested en masse only to be released without charges because there was nothing for them to be charged for. But when, uh, when you're inconvenient to the powers that be, it turns out that they can kind of just throw you into a cell if they really want to make your life hell even if they can't hold on to you for very long. We even saw the response to this go as high as the presidency with Joe Biden giving a speech in which uh, he denounced uh, violent protests that do not exist. They simply do not exist. He denounced violence among these protests as if it was a real existing problem. But these protests didn't engage in violence. People were not uh, beaten and attacked. People were not killed. These were peaceful protests. Sure, there were incidents of, of property damage. Who knows if it was accidental or not? But that is not violence. That is not violence. And yet from the pulpit of the presidency, he denounced violence among these movements in this, with people who are his voters, he was denouncing he didn't even take the make the effort uh, to uh, uh, to recognize that framing protesters as if there's some kind of outside agitating danger is the right wing's playbook being used against him. But that kind of speaks to the state of affairs when it comes to uh, when it, when it comes to uh, Joe Biden right now. Joe Biden is, of course. Uh, largely implicated as the war in Gaza, the genocide against the Pal Palestinian people being meted out by by the Israeli government, has uh, that pol that policy, that heinous and murderous policy, has been carried out under Biden's watch. He was the president who was over who was overseen this. It built up and it happened under his watch with his approval. He is the one who's been signing off um, on, on endless funds being going to Israel. He's done very little to push back. He's offered a few finger shakes in the direction of Netanyahu, but he has uh, continued to stonewall journalists, to ignore the pleas of his own party, and he has faced severe repercussions for it, which is now endangering the entire country because... His inability to talk to his own voter base on this issue is, is leading to deactivation of voters in his own party, which makes the chances of Donald Trump coming into power even more. That's terrible. Additionally, we have witnessed some really, really gross and dark incidents. I want to show you one such example that I feel deserves um, highlighting. Um... This is a uh, this happened a couple of weeks ago during the protests. Oh. Darn, my link broke. Oh, right. Because they changed to hold on a second. Here we go. They changed it to X. There we go. 
All right, I want to show you this, okay, real quick. This is something that I wanted to highlight. This is the type of shit that the police were getting up to, okay? This was at UCLA, all right? Back on May 2nd, UCLA, all right? Police unmask low-life UCLA protester for the whole world to see. And I want you to observe this behavior here and what this sort of speaks to for the state of affairs in our country, okay? So here we have, we have media cameras set up. The police are walking over. They are positioning the person they are arresting. Now keep in mind, this person has not had a trial or anything like that. They're just getting arrested, okay? Positioning them towards the cameras, taking off their mask, taking everything off, squaring them up directly in front of Fox News cameras. I want you to look at the grace with which this protester handled this incident. And I want to point out the fact of exactly what the cops are doing here, which is this is an attempt to bring extrajudicial punishment down on students exercising their First Amendment right. There is no reason for cops to unmask protesters in front of Fox News cameras unless they hope that highly radicalized and activated uh, individuals among the viewership of the national news will act on it. There is no reason to do that whatsoever. This is where we are right now as a country. Um, we have a, uh, uh, a government that at best is stonewalling and at worst is black bagging people for speaking out against it. Um, that is the that is that is where we're at in America, and uh, when the when Trump and his allies, which let me remind you that police departments all across America had extremely high numbers of Trump voters, that police unions tend to support Trump's policies and tend to be heavily on board with the MAGA movement. Uh, uh, that we live in a state of affairs where. If, uh, if the rule of law isn't good enough for these people, that they take it into their own hands. That they believe that it's appropriate for students, young students expressing their First Amendment rights, to be forcibly exposed to a national audience. And again, this is national news. They're being unmasked without having their day in court. They didn't go and they're not on trial. They didn't get convicted of a crime. This is not some hardened criminal. These are students expressing their First Amendment rights, and they're being exposed to the national news. Now, there's two aspects of this. The fact that the news cameras are there willing to participate is a violation of journalist ethics, because exposing someone, um, uh, exposing someone to a national uh, attention must be newsworthy, and it must also be ethical in and of itself. But we all know that Fox News doesn't really care about journalistic ethics. They don't really care about rule of law. What they care about is getting their way. And of course, as uh, Fox News is extremely conservative, and as Netanyahu, is a, the, the leader of the current Israeli government, is a massive Donald Trump supporter, and Donald Trump is, of course, a massive Netanyahu supporter, it just seems pretty interesting to me how these... Uh, how these interests all line up that state violence when they can't win state violence they'll pass it on to their deranged fans to do extrajudicial extrajudicial violence to people who have done nothing wrong this wasn't the only incident by the way either i wanted to show you another one because this one was also very interesting and you can actually see in real time even further just how far the cops were going to ensure that the people that they were arresting uh, are, uh, are, are, have their faces shot out to a national audience. These kids will have themselves endangered by the types of psychopaths who uh, are obsessed with Fox News. Take a look at this. Look at them, wrenching her into the position. 
cops are part of the KKK. There, there's a, uh, Here they go. The there we go. And you can see them getting wrenched into position so that they're taken right in front of the cameras. Think about the resources. They're pulling away from... It doesn't get a whole lot more obvious than that. What's going on here? We know what the cops are doing. We know what the right is trying to do in this country. And we know exactly why they're fighting so hard against students making their voices heard. Because they don't believe in democracy. They don't believe in free speech. They believe in the iron fist of the state under their control. And if they're not the ones in charge right this moment, they'll find any way to make sure that, that anyone who opposes them is damaged or hurt until they can take control. And that is exactly the, the moment that we live in in America right now. Do we not remember what happened when Donald Trump lost the election? When Donald Trump lost the election fair and square and had a hissy fit and started an entire reality denial movement? Do we not remember uh, January 6th? We know where the right is at right now. And I want to say, it's fucking amazing that these students have been willing to stand up knowing the hostile environment that we exist in, to take care of each other, to watch out for each other, to, to endure doxing, to endure uh, 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 this type of absolutely horrible, uh, unjust exposure to a national audience. I want to shout out all the people who are brave enough to fight for this. And I also want to tell you the extent to which uh, uh, people feel impassioned for this particular movement. Because let's just, let's just see. Just as a quick reminder, let me see. I want to see if I can get the, the most recent update. According, according to the recent numbers from the Gaza Health Authority, at least 12,000, 12,300 children, at least, and that's the known numbers, have died in the last four months of this war, okay? That's just the children, okay? It is the, what we are talking about is one of the most heavily documented, visible, and horrifying mass killing events in, in recent memory. We're, we've been able to watch this shit unfold every single day. People are activated about this. People care about this. And that's, it's a good thing to see so many people moved to fight against this. I wanna show something else. Just a testament to how, how the kids are doing all right, okay? And not just that, but they're, br they're, they're bringing people to shame, okay? I want to show you this real quick, all right? Watch this clip with me, okay? Here we go. Watch this. We've been seeing all over the news all the craziness that's happening on college campuses, especially at UCLA. This is at UCLA, okay? So I decided to come here for myself. Do you mind if I interview? I'm not going to talk to media. Excuse me, do you guys want to tell me what's going on here? No, sorry. We're not, we're not letting any media in. Okay, we were just standing outside, just trying okay. to... Are we allowed to ask you guys a few questions about this? A lot of us just don't feel comfortable. I can direct you to media liaison. Um, we're not gonna... Um, we're not gonna interview with you today. We're not gonna engage. <laughs> the scary music! <laughs> it's literally like... With people that are gonna be pushing us. Never seen anything like this in my life. Based! Based! I've spoken to them, they won't speak to me. Well, then you can try again. I've tried, and this lady specifically is yeah, telling me I'm an agitator. Don't engage with agitators. I'm just trying to understand what you're protesting. For some reason, no one from your guys' team will let you guys speak, and I don't know why you guys can't speak to me. 
And like this is so intense. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The breaking down and crying when you when you can't agitate your normal way and you're out of ideas, so you just start like bawling like a baby because people won't indulge your crappy agitation and you say, I'm not, I'm not an agitator. Intimidating and scary for you guys to be standing here. I literally have walked around for the past two hours just asking peaceful questions like what's going on here today? Why are you guys here? And no one can speak to me. And you guys are laughing. I don't understand how this is funny. I genuinely wanted to learn from you and I wish we could have ended in a hug that's actually what I hoped from this that's my dream from all of this that we could understand each other yeah totally okay, <laughs> okay. I think we need more barricade guys based now look um we all know that right now in America there is a uh, there's a little handshake that goes on between the forces, the oppressive forces of the state, and these so-called journalists that, that, that team all over every other corner uh, on the internet, every YouTuber uh, uh, with, a, with a camera that goes out to ask a whole bunch of questions. I want to point out, first of all, and shout out the discipline that it takes to be able to uh, get everybody to, to avoid engaging with these nasty people. Uh, people have had enough of the Steven Crowders. People have had enough of the Caitlin Bennett's and the, the Info Wars and all these disgusting, manipulative, lying pieces of shit. They've had enough of them, but it still takes discipline to get everybody together. And of course, I want to point out the fact that uh, people who are politically active are getting smarter. These students are getting smarter about this stuff, generally. They've started to realize and recognize the systems that they're grappling with that want to hurt them. Uh, and secondly, I want to point out just how weak the right wing in this country really is. That they are, they are, they are in such a position where they are so blatantly uh, uh, out of touch with reality that they have to pretend to cry to make it seem like... I don't know, like you're you're engaging with a scary group of peaceful people who all very politely say, I'm sorry, we don't really want to talk with you. And you have to go, I'm so scared. You, you're not allowed to talk to anybody. I'm scared. What's happening to you? What's, what are they doing to you? Are you getting mind controlled? Have they, have they extracted your vocal, uh, your vocal cords? What's happening to me? It's so goofy. But this is where they're at. This is where the right wing is at. It's desperation. If they don't have, they have no other tools in their book anymore except for the raw, unfiltered violence. Except for attacking encampments and hitting people with boards. A real documented act of violence that happened from counter protesters against pro Palestinian uh, students. They don't have any other option except for re leaning on the state's violence. Cops, cowardly fucking cops, hiding in their armor and cracking the skulls and arresting and locking up and tying zip ties on these fucking kids. That's what they've got left. Their mask has been peeled off. And I hope that we continue to peel their mask off. Yeah, they're, these, these types... Uh, the 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 pathetic fakers, the 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 propaganda merchants of the uh, uh, of the right wing. These these people, their time, their job is evaporating because people are getting smart to it, and that's good because they should be exposed for what they are. Let's not forget. Let's not forget that this entire time, for all of these years. Right-wing groups uh, uh, worked with people like fucking Andy Neo, who was willing to hand out names to neo-Nazi organizations of people that he didn't like, of trans people that he didn't like, of protesters that he didn't like, of people he thought were on Antifa. And he gave those to, uh, to, to a neo-Nazi terrorist group, a recognized neo-Nazi terrorist group. And all of these right-wingers were totally fine to keep giving that guy a platform. You see, because they like to present a clean exterior. They like to make their stupid little jokes and their little, you know, haha, you were in the know, right? But at the end of the day, 
they are constantly hungry for violence. They are constantly hungry for violence that helps them impose their will on everyone else, and no one else is taking it anymore. The more that these people can be exposed for the way that they behave, for what it really is, then we can start to have the real conversations about what is at stake in this country. And what is at stake is that we have a movement in this country, a right-wing movement that wants to brutally oppress the rights of anyone who's not like them. You're not a Christian, into the fucking cage with you. You're not a, you're not a straight, a white, a man, into the cage with you. They are prepared and willing and hungry to force every single person into a place of subjugation. Now, will they have the power to do it? I think that's up in the air. We know they don't have the popular power. The right wing is not popular enough on a pure numbers level to, to do this. What they have to do is they have to consolidate martial power and economic power in order to wrench everyone else into their position. And we should resist that. We should fight that every way that we can. And thank God for all of the protesters who've been out there doing exactly that, who've been out there showing up for something that matters. The non-aesthetic witch, aesthetic witch says, you were the reason I went out and fought for the first time with a crowd. Normally, I, I would just, I would just do, do art or other stuff to make a statement, but I joined the students finally. That's incredible. Thank you so much for doing that. And I'm happy that I was able to help in any way. I have my talents that I try to use to get the word out there. I have the ability to broadcast. I have the ability to talk convincingly about these subjects. I have the ability to present things and motivate people. And I really wanna do my best. And I'm so happy that I was able to help you feel motivated in some way. But I wanna say thank you for doing that. Seriously, it means a lot. And I hope that other people in my audience will also step out there and fight for what's right too. This is like the 60s all over again. Oh, yes, it is. This is like the 60s all over again. There is so many, there are so many protests still going on uh, in this country. There are still so many people taking a stand. And this is going to be a long struggle, okay? Um, this, uh, uh, the, the, the absolutely horrific killings by the Israeli state are not going to stop. They are not, they have not stopped being supported explicitly by the U.S., um, the nightmare that is occurring in Gaza, all of that blood flows over the hands of the United States of America. And that is not to say that every person who lives in America needs to spend their time feeling guilty. I don't believe in that type of structure. But we should acknowledge that it's happening here, and we should recognize that every single tactic that is used abroad always finds its way home. And the brutality that we've seen directed towards students, young, peaceful students, expressly engaging in their First Amendment rights, that was, the, the narratives were supported by Joe Biden. This shit is being directed at students, is just a taste. We have seen it happen over and over again. Since the Iraq war, we have seen the militarization of our police, the the investment of, of Israel, the Israeli government's investment in things like Cop City, a mass militarized cop training facility that has trainees, that uh, trainers and trainees that go back and forth with the Israeli government. These are things we have to pay attention to. These are things that we must think about and that we must take a stand against. It's not okay. Okay? It's not okay when it happens here. It's not okay when it happens elsewhere. The 
talking about Gaza has been uh, a draining, painful, horrifying, traumatizing experience. Even just witnessing that horror from afar is, it damages your psyche, okay? For the people who are living through it, it is a, it is a hell beyond any of our imagining, okay? None of us can imagine who are listening right now, I think very few of you, maybe maybe a handful of you somewhere out there have gone through anything even remotely similar. Most of us can't even imagine just how bad it is for these people, for these innocent people who didn't do fucking anything, okay? And even talking about all of this has been hard. However, the work that has been put into keeping this issue in the public's eye, the work and the effort that has been made to documenting what has been going on has resulted in small glimmers of hope. Glimmers of hope like a protest movement that is seriously upsetting the political landscape in America all over the country. I want you to think about that. America is a massive chunk of land, okay? America is a huge country with a lot of people on it. I want you to think about how activated people have to be to have protests popping up on every corner of this quadrant of the globe. All the way, and I, and, and I, I can't even say that it stops in America because it's extended up to Canada. It's happening in Europe as well. All over the world, people are rising up about this. That's incredible. It shows you why it's valuable to care. It shows you why it's valuable to push back, to take the time to think about these things, to open your mind to what is possible in politics beyond just showing up to vote for two guys in November, okay? I have talked about this for a very, very, very long time. Perhaps the most talked about issue, maybe trans stuff is maybe more talked about on my channel, but I have talked for years now about how I believe it is important to evolve your politics beyond the electoral. That it is not just a vote that matters, that you can have an impact in the world that is bigger than just voting. That if you just allow yourself to be trapped by a never ending cycle of watching the news, being terrified by the news, and then basically doing exactly what you are told by the government that is engaging in these actions, that that is a losing strategy and that you can find liberation and empowerment and hope in developing a politics that reaches beyond that framework. This is not to say that there is no value in voting, just to preempt a bunch of people who I know are gonna say things. Of course there's value in voting. Of, of course there, is, there are times when it is important to vote. What I'm saying is that it is not enough, not even close. It is not, it is not enough and it is not where you have the most impact. You going out and standing up and saying something about this, being willing to, to even just stand in a place and chant a line says so much more than whether or not you're willing to you know, punch a hole in a ballot. However you can contribute, not everyone can be a protester. Not everyone can stay in an encampment. Not everyone is in that position of their life, but there are ways that people can contribute. For me, I can do stuff like this. I can show you what's going on, I can make it matter. For you, you might have something else you could do. You might have a talent that nobody else in this audience right now has. You might have a talent that could be of help. And I want you to think about that. I want this to be in all of your minds. I want you to constantly have it in your mind that just that door being open. What could I do to bring my politics a step beyond? How do I help make a better world? How do I liberate myself and those that I care about, those that are around me? How do I participate in healing a broken world? What can I do to do that? That's what I want, okay? I'm really, I, I really wish that I could do a better job expressing how proud I am 
to know that there are all kinds of lefty students out there fighting like hell to show that they are not okay with a world that stands by and allows genocide to unfold, that they are not okay kowtowing to the demands of a state that is willing to fund and enable this type of killing. I can't express just how proud I am that there are people willing to fight back against that. There are people willing to take risks. There are people willing to gamble on unlikely outcomes because it's the right thing to do. There's a lot of tough stuff in the world right now. But something that I do believe in is that I do believe, you know, you all know me, okay? I have a liberatory lean. I, my, my approach in politics is, tends to be one of, uh, how do I put this? I have, I have a non-individualistic uh, approach to politics that also doesn't fall into hyper-collectivism, okay? I don't believe in these rigid structures uh, uh, like, you know, like vanguard parties and all of that. I believe that real connections between real people build a social network that can influence change. That people coming to become aware of their circumstances, of the world that they live in, and their own power. Everybody's ability to exert power is different and we can grow each other's ability to exert power in the world by working together i don't mean dominance i mean we can take care of each other we have political power in our hands our bodies represent a form of political power our voices our artistic talents our vision our dreams our 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 ability to program our ability to make food these are all forms of political power that in the correct configurations can make a better world and it i believe that i believe that a better world can be made if people are able to see themselves and 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 organize themselves to liberate themselves i really do believe that Anyway, there's not a whole lot more for me to say on this subject at this particular juncture. Students are out there right now protesting. You should support them in any way that you can, okay? Seriously, they need your help out there. They're fighting for an incredibly good, good cause. The more pressure that we can put on Biden right now, the better. There might be, it might be that there is no level of pressure that will force Biden to change. However, if nothing else, if nothing else, it will make sure that nobody forgets, nobody forgets that everybody knew what was going on and was pushing back. It'll make people realize the monstrous structure that we have built for ourselves in this country. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, thank you so much for hearing me out. And please, please keep your mind open to what you can do if you build yourself into a beautiful social network. And I don't mean uh, like the, the internet way. I mean a real one. Together, we can be so much stronger and together we can really change the world. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed down below.